Some technical issues plagued the start of this match, but here we are about 10 minutes later. Not too long, all things considered. It's Pineapple Phillips and Boggs to bring you the action, and the first best of one of the evening will take place on the 51st floor. Pain Gaming on the T side, barreling towards A. Sharks is the response. The player pressuring down towards B. That's a lot of information to gain, but Pain Gaming are not going to slow this take down. They're going straight for an execute. This flank has to be timely. It has to be perfect. Pain can turn around. They can get the sight, or they can get stabbed in the back. Big Zeta charging in, gets dinked, but he's still able to get a kill, helped out by Nine Zin. DRG and Togs, however, really stabilizing things, but it ends up in a 2v2 as NQZ doubles down. Bomb rotating over to B site. Togs and Gafolo going to rotate around behind as well. Lux is reading this perfectly. Jump across, will not throw his aim off for the second either. Great hold by Lux and QZ to even give them the space to rotate around behind. And Pain Gaming get the pistol round. They don't get the bomb plant, but they get the round victory. And that's what matters for them right now. Heads up play to go for an immediate push through elevator towards B. And a confidence play from Lux to hold that close angle and double down with the Glock. Very well done to lock down the round for Pain Gaming. And the Sharks, they aren't going to force an investment in round number two. They're going to save for the most part. Cogs has a P250, but nothing else has been purchased. Actually, there was one flash, excuse me, on Doc, but still very minimal investment, all things considered. And Payton Gaming know it's going to be a low buy. They're going to bide their time. They're going to play for minimal casualties in mind. Maybe build up some cash with those MAC-10s as well. Molotov to side hall. Lux will get the opener and QZ there to follow him up. The MAC-10s have yet to answer. Maybe one from Big U there. It is the last one. But a double up from NQZ and from Lux. A back-to-back -back brace of braces for the two of them. And Big U just getting that extra $600 with the MAC-10. Here comes the buy from Young Sharks, however. They will not have an off. Their utility is quite minimal as well. One Molotov, five smokes, three flashes, and one solitary high explosive grenade. There is a distinct lack on the young shark sign. However, Nate, they do not hold a diffuse kit. Could I sold the helmet? Although that's kind of dicey given the Mac 10s. And the Galil. They don't know that's yeah. there. Normally we say dispense with the helmets. Don't bother. But because it's a bonus round, it really does have a... Rather tremendous impact. And Payne reading this incredibly well. Just a straight walk up. He, Gafalo gets the spot. He'll get one at least. And some good damage on the big U, if I'm not mistaken. Otherwise, that might have been elsewhere. But Gafalo, he's bought time, but can't double down. Sight control taken. Togs, though, has gotten the rotation in. The A1S split between two targets. Can't hit Smart gets Lux finds the kill instead. And Payne Gaming wrestle away a tenuous advantage four versus three but big uzera and lux are both low on hp what does that matter young sharks already looking elsewhere they might call this round quits based off the deficit alone i would say they should call it quits here they don't have money they have full armor and m4s on three save it here maybe you get a hunt from pain but up on top of the halo the donut suplex Look at that first. That's an AK dropped as well, I think. Don't I believe it was. Believe that they'll go aggressive to grab that. But still. Terrorists win. It's a good kill to find. At least it keeps that economy somewhat on. It's still gonna be very good for pain with that 3-0 lead on this T side. Interesting side note as well. Pain's stats are pretty even across both sides. 58% CT, 54.8% T, so it's a 3.2% difference. That's still very good. And meanwhile, Sharks, 57.7 on the CT side, 45% on the T. That does not bode well no. for that second half. That means if they get at least six, ideally, seven or eight would be the perfect. Well, things haven't started off ideally. Down oh. 3 NQZ has an op in hand. Young Sharks, so they don't put their foot down or at least do some good damage here soon. Pain Gaming's economy is going to run away with this first half. That hop for NQZ could be a bit of a limiting factor for the T-side's mobility, although he's holding ramp. And if 
The CTs walk into this angle. It's always the ops favor. He spots out the peak of the backpack. Doesn't take the shot wisely. Could try the shot through yellow, but he's not going to make that risk. Waits for the peak. Takes Ooh. a dink, but he secures the kill. More importantly, now a man advantage for pain with a minute to go. They can move forward. DRG trying to regain some control. The ramp area sprayed down by Lux. And now pain can scale forth onto the A site. Molly's down to sandbags. Suplex and Togs here as utility flies through. Togs down to half. Flash is raining through. Suplex blind and removed. Togs will soon follow suit. Out at jump up headshot area. He's finally finished. And Gafalo will do nothing to save this round. And there is nothing he could do. A flawless likely here for Payne. Barring any kills on the hunt. Gafalo. As you mentioned, nothing he can do. It was towards B. 1v5. The entirety of Payne against him and... Not enough time at this stage. Gonna try and save his gun. We'll see if Pain Gaming will let him do so. And we talked about individuals. Sure, we specifically highlighted Big Uzera for Pain. We didn't really highlight, highlight anybody for Sharks. The player you look to, though, is Doc. He is the one that stands out head and shoulders above the rest. 1.19 HLTB rating. 1.37 impact, eclipsing even that of Big U. He has been silenced in the early goings of this first map. He has yet to get a kill. He's the only one in the server, in fact. Yet, actually, Ka Chaos does not have one on Pain, but, you know, that's a, a smaller issue for Pain than Doc, the figurehead, being entirely absent. Oh. Pain are doing it without Big U. Sharks have no response yet. Togs will get caught. Nyazin takes out Gafolo as well. That was one of the rifles in possession for young Sharks. Now the rest of Pain sprinting over to B. DRG, the only one who can really defend the site, and all he has is a USP up, jump up. Suplex. Probably best to save what Doc and Suplex have. DRG's picked up the rifle. There's not really a reason to go for this. DRG's removed now. Even more reason to save for Doc, who's given up his position. Kaz just waiting in behind for that flank. Great play there. And Another round chalked up in the pain gaming win column. Young Sharks... Look like fish out of water. I was expecting Payne to have a rather hefty advantage. I didn't think it'd be this smothering, though. These rounds have been clean, convincing, run-of-the-mill for Payne. They have not been tested. Lux might fall. Yep, he will. Not a flawless round because of that. Ooh, Suplex as well. Doesn't get the rifle. That's unfortunate. But he does at least get another kill. It doesn't really do too much to the economy. Payne, it's been smooth sailing through and through. How many times have they died? Two, four... Seven times total over five rounds. That is a statement. That's a great statement. And we have a technical pause here. So we'll have to await the resumption of our game. But pain are looking so strong right now. And the opposite can be said for Sharks. There's just been no response individually. Pain have won the fights. The closest round Sharks had was the 2v2 pistol. Since then, it's been all Pain gaming. So four of those seven deaths came in one round. Four of those seven came in round one. That means yeah. they've had a total of uh, what, three deaths, three deaths, in, deaths four. in four rounds. Yep. That's an absurd stat line. It's less than a death around. And it's getting close to evening out to a death around. Again, expected a hefty advantage for Payne, just given the reps they've been doing, the showing they had at uh, the Major, yet was not expecting something of this, like a sprint out the gates. I expected maybe something like, like Made in Brazil that we saw yesterday at the close qualifier, you know, a slow start, getting back into that groove of the domestic competition, but that's not the case. Payne giving pick up right where you'd expect them to. We have an opt now for Suplex to challenge NQZ. And 
an actual set of utility. It takes some control, perhaps, for sharks. Well done to do that towards B, but no kills. Could be spoken about it yet. No kills, barely any damage, just the 10 points delivered onto NQZ. Kofolo behind the double stack. Just to be careful not to get bullied. He's aware of the boost. That Molotov will land on his position and force him into a bit more of an awkward angle. Now Pigazetta goes up. Head spotted! And he's removed. Gafolo reads that well. The nade finishes him off, though. That's a good trade, and I think Bigu will be happy with that. 4v4. Lots of time left to work with, and it spreads out this defense even thinner. DRG rotating over from A, playing a sort of mid-angle. Is the bomb still down? Pain. Waiting for a push. Young Sharks playing this one a lot more disciplined now. The bomb being gathered and brought to B. The hit will come through soon. It's got to go through somewhere in the next 15 or so seconds. Lux falling is a big play, a big loss for Pain as Doc is the one to take him down. Utility flying in now on the B site. Nia Zin leading the charge as Togs takes some utility damage. Nia Zin through the smoke, tries to clear out the pillar. He runs into two, and DRG has him. But Cowes answers back with a pair on the spray. 10 seconds to get that bomb down. 13 on the clock now. NQZ sticking that bomb to dirt. Cowes, guardian of the stack. The tower, and he got the headshot flick. He took damage, but he's now in a 1v1 versus the op. And the damage he's taken doesn't matter. He just has to land the shot or not. He shot himself into the open. He falls and hits the deck. And young sharks can grab their first of this map. But it comes down to a dire 1v1. Only one player surviving for the CT side decimates their economy, which has not even gotten out of the egg yet. Hasn't even become a fledgling animal. It's still in that beginning stage. The lack of utility here overall will significantly hamper young sharks. And pain can believe even more that their individuals can win them the day. So it was way too close for comfort. The sharks had all the advantage. It's way too close for comfort. Economy still gonna be in a bad way for young sharks. Meanwhile, Pain Gaming have so much money, they don't even know what to do with it. Easily reinvesting into that op for NQZ. Of course, saved his. And if they lose this round, the young sharks lose back to square one, back to a half pie, back to no money. A lot rides on this. Pressure's on. Pain. Upping the tempo, upping the pace, getting rep control rather quickly, throwing exec utility, not outright committing as of yet. Lux is very low, tagged and harassed by utility. Now Kawes will go ahead, trying to be the hero he wasn't around prior, but caught by the op. NQZ goes tit for tat, dropping Togs. Four versus four, even putting, but that normally favors the T's. NQZ, an uncharacteristic miss from behind the sandbags. He'll throw utility to buy some time and space. Will he be given another easy opportunity to find the kill? Actually going to be left towards sandbags. The rest of Pain are falling back, and Young Sharks realize this. They're rotating back as well towards B. Gofalo's already here. Suplex and Doc are in towards Elevator. There's a third towards Middle. No, just those two in Elevator, excuse me. Gofalo has to come a huge. He'll find the first. Nizen taken down. A good start. Lux is low as well. He could find a second with ease. Gofalo dancing around the double stack. He'll get around the smoke. Pain don't want to commit to this fight. We're gonna slow down, double back again with 20 seconds left. Pain. Noise. All over the place, and NQZ has control of the A site. But he doesn't have heaven here. Suplex, what a shot from him. Takes more damage, but he's got the health to survive. Gofalo rotating through. Catches the op, and then Suplex delivers one onto Lux. The op comes out for Sharks, and they've got two in a row. They're starting to stabilize things here on the CT side. Pain. I'm almost wanting to see a timeout out of them because the last couple of rounds have been rudderless. The last round was all over the place. Mm -hmm. They went A, through utility, kind of waited around, went towards B. They felt they pulled a rotation, then went back towards A. It did feel rudderless, you're right. Like a certain conviction. You'd expect to see from pain. 
spam down ramp is suddenly having a lot more success for the sharks as well. DRD throwing a nade. Caught, though. They did good damage to Lux, but they didn't get the kill, and he will punish him accordingly. Lux has had a killer start to this map as well. Ten kills to his name. Eight towards side hall into big Uzera is foolhardy. No utility for Doc to go for the peak. That means he's going to be unseated with ease. Furthering the advantage now for Payne. They might have just righted the ship. Togs, Gofalo, and Suplex. Three versus five. They still have that op in play. Suplex has done some good work with it, but mm -hmm. a lot is going to be required of him. Gofalo has done well as well as an anchor. Just buying time, but he's rotated off his home of B. He's gone to A. In the meantime, Painter chucking everything the opposite direction. It's a three-stack B, or A, rather, from Young Sharks. And with Big Uzana just lurking around, he'll spot one from behind. He spots out the op, and he does fall. So that's going to be extra damage and maybe even force a save out of Young Sharks. Suplex caught in rotation by Kawes pushing through mid. And Togs wants nothing to do with this. He'll save away somewhere on A. Pain strike back after a couple rounds where they looked completely lost. It's a good return for them. And of course, Big U getting the two gifts he got on the A site does help out immensely. Did like that start from Lux, though. Just playing around, playing the sound cue with that nade coming through. He hears the pin pull, pushes through that smoke for the freebie kill. But you can't rely on stuff like that to give you rounds consistently. And I'm still not sold on pain against the guns right now. Neither mind. They have a very interesting strategy. They always leave one player towards the opposite site to either show presence or seize an opportunity if a rotation goes the other way. So, a very interesting overall strategy from Payne. They did pay off there. I like the idea from Young Trucks as well in the three versus four. They know they can't reasonably cover both sites with the, the firepower they require, so they go for a gamble. The idea being, if they go B, maybe we can hold out for 10 seconds and look for a pick, then save. But if they go A, we'll have our firepower here to try and actually rebuke the take. So it's a bit of a gamble, but you kind of have to make those concessions in the deficit situation. Unfortunately for them, their economy not really settling out as they would have hoped with the two-round victory. They're going to be on a compromised investment. MP9, FAMAS, two M4s, and that op for suplex. Use them wanting a lot more. There's the opener for Niazin. The stand in the Academy promotion here as Togs up and drop. They'll take down two. Damage done to Niazin helps out significantly. Togs hops down. Spotted by NQZ. Pushes forward the nade from Lux. Will end up finishing the job. But DRG in the meantime eliminated Kawes. Lux comes through with a big headshot though as he's low on health. Took a deep to the USP of Togs before he failed his opposition. In Lux, a third, all up to Suplex now. Op. Up top, looking for the kill. Flash ping high as the bomb goes down. Suplex, full blind, fades away to CT, hoping he can catch somebody on a cross. Lux should just stay behind, triple. Suplex Ooh. hits the wall, bang, but it only does one two points of damage. So it's not really too much to write home about. But in the open, Lux adds another one to his tally. Grabs the quad. And that's the seventh for Payne again being brought forward thanks to individual brilliance. Individuals really shining. Lux. And QC Cow is doing as they required, but Lux especially at 14 kills. An absurd performance from him. And Young Sharks are just going to continually buy. I'd love to see a pause at this point. If you're going to buy here, I guess they're kind of half buying, kind of not. Gofalo's below a grand. Togs is at 50 left in the bank with a Hero M4. It's all over the place, Young Sharks. It's clear there's some method to their madness, but I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, I'm right with you. I don't exactly know what the game plan was here from Sharks, buy-wise. Maybe it's, you know... At this point, what difference does it make? There's two rounds left, or three rounds, really, but might as well give us ourselves a shot. The 5-7 is going to be incredibly deadly around the corners. Togs has the rifle to solo B. Gofalo with the Deagle. I mean, the $200 difference, 1100 to 950 It's a difference between a flashbang or not. I think that's their logic. Yeah, but if they count every nickel and penny like that... Severely hamstring a full buy going forward. 
and flashbang could be the difference between a one fight at the opener and a lost clutch. True. Straight nade exec on B, and have made the choice. They slowed things down, hoping to see some desperate aggression. They actually run into the togs. Good double tap on the first. Lux, though, trades, looking for more as well. The spirit top above the smoke. Togs gets the kill. MQZ and Big U, though, answer in kind. Maintain an advantage. The pistols, though, getting a bit chaotic on sight. MQZ drops one. The last alive to suplex. He's known to be on the jump over. Spotted crossing. Can't get a gun either. That will be his undoing. Calwes does a min and pain continue the tear. Eight to two. The money's okay. They can get a rifle. For Togs, that was our biggest question. He bought mm -hmm. all the way down to what fifty dollars in the bank, but he is able to get one. So those Lack two utility. kills, yeah, two kills bailing him out. He would have been on a Famas or even an MP9 if he hadn't gotten those. So a very delicate dance for young sharks with their economy. Suplex on the op again as well. That was a catalyst for young sharks in their two round streak they had. Seems a flash in the pan, however, as they have failed to really get anything going consistently. Pain's individuals, Lux in particular, has been so good at shutting down sharks. And the rest just kind of scale up behind him and get the rest of the job done. He almost took down Togs as well, who gets tilled by Lux on the, on the first little peak, just right off the rip. That's so unlucky for, for Togs. Right as I'm saying, yeah, Lux was just spamming the smoke for info. He didn't really realize he saw Togs on the stack behind. Big Azetta runs into the off and rings the bell. Adds another one. Oh, it's Kawas instead. But still, the end result is the same. A B-side plant as Payne moved through mid. Doc and DRG, who's low on health, will presumably be saving. I say presumably because Doc, oh, that's what he's looking for. Will he be allowed to save, though, is the better question. Because Kawa is already in. Lux has made contact. Loses the fight to DRG's sidearm. Awkward fight. That They're both known to beat side hall. There's no way they survived this, surely. Pain bring down the might upon them. That op is something that young sharks are going to be desperately trying to bring into that final round of the first half. Big U is nade. Unseats DRG. The last one alive. Doc. Nice little off angle with the op for one, but no chance. Kawa is side hall. Does him in. Good trade. Again, Pain Gaming been in control of this one pretty much the whole entire time. They lost those two rounds, blip on the radar, but their economy was never broken. And they've just stuck to the game plan ever since. 9-2, to two, 10 seeming likely. That op will not be in play for Young Sharks. It'll, it'll instead be two auto shotguns for Togs and Gafolo. No kits. Notable lack of utility. Desperation for this defense. Desperation. It's a desperate race against the rounds piled up by Pain Gaming. Doc removed early. Big U doubles up on the entry. DRG tried to fight as well. He meets the same fate. And Big U's at a beginning to activate. And truly take control here. Pain looking for 10 on the T side. Going into the stronger side of the defense. The young sharks attack that pales. Gaffalo up close, maybe one. Get the one and a lot of damage. Kawes nades his own teammate. But Togs and Suplex are here. They have been spotted. Does not stop Suplex from one. He might get another as well. Kawes clutches up. Hits the shot on the last to do a 10-2 half as we hit the break.
Well, things got a little hectic here. And towards the end of the half, we saw Payne really take control of it again. Boggs and Pineapple Phillips with you for the second half. And of course, the last best of one between these two teams as well today, this afternoon and evening. Nate Payne got out to a fiery start, stumbled a little bit. But their individual prowess really pushed them over the line to a dominant 10-2 score. I was going to say, they started out, they might even finish it strong. I don't think there's much map left at this point. If they win the pistol, it's curtains pretty much guaranteed in the next few. So, young sharks, they have to put all their ducks in a row here. They need to put their foot down now, win the pistol, win the second, win the bonus. They have a long way to go if they want to dig themselves out of the hole they find themselves in. It's, what, 10 to 2? You're going to need three rounds just to get half your opponent's score and again as you mentioned the individuals from pain are firing on all cylinders big users had his moments but the main carry has been lux Kawas as well as it's some crazy multi kills but again lux 16 kills if i'm not mistaken in that first half to start things off yeah, lux was a monster created so many rounds and so many openings for pain and then Big U started to heat up a little bit later on but it was really lux for the most part carrying them through Kawas as well he heated up a little bit towards the end there. He had a couple of moments of brilliance, but here we are getting into the second half. As you mentioned, the young sharks need to get their ducks in a row, and I think it's a very apt way of putting it because they need a string of rounds. Everyone's running around in spawn. Looks like we'll have a medic of some sort before this one. Uh, Suplex jumping off the side of the building does just confirm that here. There we go. Everyone's dead. Medic should be coming through here momentarily. And we'll get into the second half. But all the importance really does rest on this pistol round, Nate, doesn't it? Yeah, that's where Young Sharks and other begin a comeback. You want to call it that? More like the first hurdle in a desperate attempt at survival in this first one, all things considered. Can't call it a comeback until we see at least four or five rounds in their favor. But they should know it's riding on this. They're going to split some utility. Actually, three sets of utility being dropped around. Suplex has a full belt of nades drg a near full belt goffalo did he drop dualies what did he do he bought a molotov i'm assuming dropped it to a teammate he also dropped the p250 to suplex it appears so that's where the investment's going to go a super soldier and suplex and it looks like an a execute probably on the cards but pain are ready for it they have four players ready to defend this a side Nate stack into sandbags, or actually the headshot that removes NQZ. Kawas falls as well. DRG trades out on a big Azana, who's down one for one. Lux cannot connect more than one, leaving the Academy promote Naya's in to come on through and try and clutch up. Flash goes deep. He won't be pushed, but he doesn't make any noise in falling around that corner. That gives him at least some element of mystique. Naya's in. I believe he spotted Togs jumping around as well towards side hall. It's planted for those duelies as well. Dangerous fight up close, but he wins that clean. I don't believe there's a kid down. He's got no time now. He wins the second fight. Maybe the third. It doesn't matter. Even if he did, there was no time. And Sharks, that first duck lined up. Key pistol round if they want to make something out of this map. Their first hurdle passed successfully. Second, though. How hard will it be? That's the question. Are Pain Gaming going to force the issue? The answer is yes. MP9, the trio of them. A 5-7 friend QZ. I'd imagine something similar for Biggie, maybe even a Deagle. Nope, 5-7. I can respect the call. It's a very potent weapon up close and personal. Say it's side hall or on B. It's a lot of places that pistol can really shine. Young Sharks, their investment largely relies on rifles. Three-fifths of the team on rifles. Two MAC-10s to harvest a bit of cash. Towards B appears to be the play for the Sharks. Never mind, they'll throw close utility. Are they committing off this? It doesn't seem like it. Just getting a couple of players forward. There's the bomb. So they are committing. DRG. Point on the Mac 10. Spot some players, but no kills. Just a bunch of shuffling from pain behind the smokes. A lot of utility used to gain the space by young sharks. But they've yet to come up with the openers. Bam through the smoke all but taking down NQZ. The bomb yet to be planted here for Young Sharks as well, which is a problem. Time is dwindling, and Payne are gathering their forces behind Jenny. They're ready to run on it now. Gafolo with one suplex with two. Gafolo head on a swivel. Delivers a nice finishing blow, leaving Lux 1v4. 
Very unlikely one at that long range spray while the MP9 has to crouch down to reload. The rifle is holding in on his position. AK is in the lil on his angle. And Suplex ends it with a hat trick. No answer back from Payne on the force by. They will have to go for a save now. And the Young Sharks should be able to get to that five round score, which equates to half of what Payne have put on the board so far. Almost the rifles come mirroring. out, though. Pardon? So once the rifles come out, it's where it gets mm -hmm. tough, though. You mentioned it. Young Sharks aren't the best on the T side, and Pin Gaming have a rather respectable overall CT stat line, so... You gotta keep the pressure on. Don't let anything go for nothing. Oh, yeah. And even still, the 5.7s can deal a lot of damage. Yes, they can. They're kind of forced into awkward fights the last round. Couldn't hit their marks, but... Young Sharks spread out a little bit. They give Pain Gaming a little bit more wiggle room. Those weapons can become menaces. That's a good way to put it. The apt way to put it, I would say. Push is coming in on through. Bomb yet to go down on the open B site. Molotov extinguishes. Apollo gets the objective down. DRG. Mac 10 looks to farm some cash. Pain or just. Oh, are they going to go for the triple boost here? Oh, they made noise. They, they're they not going to go for it anymore. That's unlucky. That would have been fun. That would have been a nice little cheeky angle. Maybe you get one kill, but more or less, I just like seeing that for the sake of it. I do like pain saving here, though. There's no reason to go die to the SMGs. There's no reason to give sharks extra kills, extra money. I would especially say Lux and Kawas justify a save with that Kevlar. They run in after the fact. Almost found one by the bomb after time, but not quite. Kawa is across the map, does save that one set of Kevlar I mentioned. Op out for NQZ, the rifle's coming through for Pain Gaming. This is where young sharks either sink or swim. Well, they're sharks, so hopefully they're able to swim. What's the shark's biggest weakness? Yeah, if they stop swimming, they die. Yeah, if they get turned upside down, they pass out. Yeah. Which is a really weird biological process. Very odd. Yeah. But hey, I didn't make sharks the way they got made. Nope. I didn't either. You just study that stuff. Slow start. Young sharks just waiting in ramp. Two players, actually three, excuse me here. One on a Mac 10, four. Goffalo bringing the bomb in tow, and a fifth in. The back line's watching for a flank. And at 15 left, Lux needs to be careful. He's gonna get overrun, overwhelmed. Not even one kill to his name. A lot of damage. Kawas will finish off what he started with the nade, but four versus four favors the T's. They're gonna continue to scale forward. Do we have a rotation in? Looks like a two still on a one site, one side hull, a third now in heaven. Ready to hold, ready to rebuke the take. Cow has two, Biggie Zero, a third. They fall flat, the Sharks. Just one for Suplex before he falls. The Yop catches him through the edge of the smoke. 11 to five when the rifles come out. Pain, take the round. Kawes ends it with three. Big U chimes in as well. Lux did a lot of the damage. Kawes did most of the rest. And Pain stop Sharks run at three. They've slowed them down. They haven't quite stopped them yet. Two more rounds, and the Sharks will be removed from Vertigo permanently. Pain. One more gun round really to go. Unless the Sharks can get a bomb plant, they're going to be on a pretty hamstrung buy. Going into round 18, should Pain convert this one? Big Azetta might be get, get tested early out towards middle. No help from drop, however. And he's completely abandoned mid as well. Togs and company moving all the way through. Bigu's going back late. He's not spotted out, but now he gets the information. Sprays wildly. He's not going to clear his corner. Niazin has two. Togs is waiting for Bigu to cross and has to go for that kill to make sure it's a 3v3. Niazin falls on sight. And so the man advantage swings the Sharks. They'll get the bomb down soon. Nades going through as Lux and Kawes make their way in. There is a duo you want for Payne to have the retake. It's Cowes and Lux, the way they performed 
on this map so far, but the lack of a Molotov, the lack of HEs, they're going to save. They're not going to go for it. And so Payne's round isolated on the CT side. Something to keep an eye on here as we get closer and closer in terms of scoreline. Young Sharks waking up. Like the play in the middle, sitting in the cubby, waiting for rotations. And that aggressive spot just makes Payne Gaming worry about too many different angles. As you mentioned, not enough utility to justify the retake. And so they'll save, as will the Sharks, the three remaining players. Two rounds for Payne to close it, but Young Sharks are indeed making a map of this. Full buy for them. A Galil on DRG is less than ideal, but still serviceable. Payne, what can they do? They're going to cobble together a half buy surrounding these saved rifles. 5-7 for Big U. Nizen on an MP9. And NQZ saving virtually everything to try and get an op sooner rather than later. He's on just a USP with flashbangs. Only one for Cowes gets spammed by the Galil through the yellow side wall. Makes things a little more difficult here for Payne. Cowes got off to a good start, and that is a rifle dropped. Unrecoverable as of yet. This information by Lux, though. The boost up reveals that it's safe to go grab that gun. In the meantime, young sharks have made their way to B. As this is such an awkward angle to have to hold with an MP9. It's a very long range duel unless they walk into him. He's got a smoke out now. He's got to get the gun through. Sprays down one. Cannot get more. Big Uzetta charges in one for one again. Togs takes half damage and falls to Lux. It's all up to Suplex now with the off. The half buy of pain almost secured. Suplex around the corner. Crouching and QZ will hit the headshot. The op tumbles down the side. But it's AKs that pain want. And map point. Or I should say match point because it is a best of one here. Here for pain. Doubling up the score of young sharks who will buy what they can. AK's Tech 9 utility on the mid side of things. And the off is there for NQZ on the defense. The kits abound for pain. The utility plentiful. A veritable cornucopia of options for them. And then QZ will fall away after revealing the off's position. Gaffalo looks through that smoke, hides under the stairs, doesn't take any damage either. It's the ramp scrim from Payne trying to regain control. Good nasal, a little too shallow. All top for the close corner with Doc to find the opener. Good trade. Suplex answers in kind. Kawes could go crazy in the close angle. Suplex is low. We'll clear it. Kawes the first, not quite the second. Good spacing and trade from DRG. Maintains that tenuous lead 3v2. Bomb is still down. Sharks still have to make a decision. Togs. No, it's just going to be gaps. He'll walk out middle. Smart call. Good time. Nizian walking by. Caught in rotation. NQZ is the last. The opper. He was known to be B earlier on, but it seems like they've gotten the read. Young Sharks know that he's on that A site. And the op will probably save for round number 20. The Young Sharks will... Hang on desperately. Six rounds, including this one, required for overtime. Six rounds required for overtime, soon to be five, because NQZ is just holding on to the op. He's not going to actually attempt to retake here. His mission is to survive, not to thrive. Deals with the first threat. Two more running his direction. The op clearing the corner. And now they elect to save Young Sharks. I think it's a good call. They don't have a lot of money. They can't afford to lose another player either. They still want utility. Their utility has been the bulk of their takes. The lack of it. Harming pain on some of the holds. This round, though, just got bullied on the ramp scrim. Led to an advantage, and Sharks took full control of that. More rifles being bought up here for pain. Is they're going to buy around that op? I think. Never mind. They're just going to go for a half? I've seen their half buys work out before. 
is an interesting call though. Yeah. Surprised Kyle really isn't like dropping a, a pistol or something over to Big U. Dunk. Just lurking towards A. Lux is here with that rifle. Where's NQZ? That's my other big question. On B side. Supporting. Guy isn't up close, and this is the right call. It's gonna be a walk up the stairs. Here they come. Op force back. P250 cleared out, and NQZ deciding to peek while blind. That's foolhardy. Both fall with next to no impact, and good clear from the young sharks as they can complete the sight control. Kawas and Big Uzera are probably going to attempt to at least find damage, but they're gonna be hard pressed to do so. In fact, all the rifles being dropped off the map as well. No respite for Pain Gaming. No inroads whatsoever to show for this round. Nothing at all. And it was a bit of a misplay there from NQZ as well, peeking while blind and staying engaged. Uh, wasn't really much that Pain had to counter that. And so it's going to be a flawless victory for Young Sharks. The Ops picked up. That'll be sent over to Suplex in the freeze time of the buy time. Tick boom. Four rounds now the gap between the two teams and the Sharks, who historically are not the best on their T side of Vertigo. Despite having quite a large sample size of 16 games, are putting together quite an efficient run of form here. Although they are up against the brink. Backs to the cliff. Yes, they are. Very solid buy for both teams heading into this round. Again, it appears to be pressure towards B. Walk mm -hmm. up the stairs once more. Nizen might be first contact. That nade is good, though. Lots of damage done. Unconfirmed. DRG will run forward regardless. All the players are blind. Nizen on double stack. Good for one. Surprised to get that. NQZ, the op in the back lines, does get one and tag a second. Young Sharks, in spite of all the resistance, are still going to force the issue, and that might be their undoing. Big U from Beck. Jenny finds another. NQZ is still here in the wings waiting to support, as is a third now as Lux rotates around. Suplex and Togs is trying to find a pick before attempting that bomb plant. Suplex swings, and he is suplexed out of the round. Just Togs. He's found that first, but not a second. NQZ over the edge of the smoke finds him, and it was a delayed end the map but it does end in the favor of pain as we expected 13 to 8 but quite a comeback all things considered for the sharks in that second half quite the comeback indeed and i think a comeback that i was not expecting although with the pistol round going their way of course they are going to stack up a few more rounds it got a little more messy towards the end of that map pain